So are you ready to dive in? I'm always ready. Right. Check, check, check. Yeah, Welcome back to my channel. Hi, how are ya? <laughs> Today we're reviewing Kylash by Kylie Jenner. I think it just gave me AIDS. Um, That's not funny, you guys. You know, if like if the tears start coming, make sure you look in the camera. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> my tears. I usually, I usually my look tears up. tears <laughs> will start. Will start coming. <laughs> uh, well, I don't have a gag reflex, and I don't usually cry. But we will see what happens today. <laughs> usually, I can get it out of people. Mm. A little mace behind the scenes. <laughs> no. Yes. Shall we get into it? Where do we begin? Okay, can you introduce yourself? Yes. I do my little introductions for everyone, so that will be in there. Okay. But just in your own words. Okay. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> this is very like, hmm. This is giving me flashbacks. <laughs> From last Hello. night. Hello. <laughs> From last night. My name is Jeffree Star. If you've never heard of me, I have been a makeup artist for over 20 years. I have my own cosmetics brand, which is top 10 in America. I used to do music, modeling, DJ. I've done it all. Um, I'm now a rancher. I'm raising Tibetan yaks in Wyoming on a beautiful ranch. Um, and I butcher them for meat. I sell them for pets and I breed them for myself. So <laughs> it is a whole world. So you of, really do it all. I do it all. Yeah. From ranching to makeup mogul, I... I don't get bored easily, but I love a good challenge. So once I master something, my brain just moves on to the next thing. Amazing. So yeah. can you tell me a little bit about your upbringing? Because you were born in L.A., but then grew up in Orange County? Opposite. Okay. Yeah. So born, born and raised in Huntington Beach. Okay. Small town. Very boring. Everyone was just, sur you know, surfers and bleach blonde, as I'm blonde right now. <laughs> um, but it was just very boring for me. And I grew up loving like the punk rock culture. I had a 10 inch pink mohawk. I would go to all the rock shows. Um, and it was just not for me. So when I graduated early at 17, I moved to LA immediately, told my mom bye. <laughs> um, and, I, and I started working at Mac freelancing as a makeup artist. Do you still have a relationship with your mom? Um, yes. Okay. It's rough. <laughs> <laughs> and were your parents together when you were born? Yeah, they like were. for when you were younger? Yeah. Two years old, they were divorced. Okay. Yeah. And then dad passed away at five. Okay. Yeah. And do you have memories of him? Yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah. The last memories are really dark and sad because he was a severe alcoholic, um, which is why I've never tried alcohol. I okay. broke the cycle of my crazy family of addicts. So I remember him looking very yellow he was having liver cirrhosis at the full works his eyebrows were falling out and the last this is really dark but one of the last memories he i have of him is him grabbing my arm and just being like please never drink alcohol so it like haunted me as i got older and then my mom was still drunk until i was like 12. <laughs> but she's sober now thanks girl um and it was really crazy so i just remember the smell like my mom would go take the beer cans that she drank and recycle them to buy more beer. Like it was a really vicious cycle and alcohol just haunted my childhood. So I decided early to just never try it, break the cycle. Mm -hmm. I didn't try weed till I was 23. So I'm a late bloomer Yeah, giving head at 12, but weed, weed at 23. Substances later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was home life chaotic at all? It was, yeah, it was. So I, so people always ask like, well, how did you get into makeup? I don't really specifically know why I, gravitated towards it but I think psychologically I wanted to create an escape mm -hmm. and it was really awesome to just sit in front of the mirror escape for hours not hear about the screaming the fighting the drunkenness and just play so I would steal my mom's makeup and rub it on my eyes and just create looks if you even want to call them that back then and I would steal her cosmopolitan magazines and read all the cool stuff and see the beauty ads and Estee Lauder and all that stuff and I just became obsessed do you yeah. feel like that was also similar reasoning for when you, because you kind of started on MySpace, right? Yeah. Of, I'm an internet dinosaur, so yeah. <laughs> I just looked, and last year, I, I, I've been online for 20 years. Wow. It's a long time. That is a putting long time. It, putting so much of my life out there, yeah. And being so, yeah, open with everything. Yeah. <laughs> but do you feel like there was seeking, like there was an element of kind of seeking... I don't know what you're saying, what you did with the makeup yeah. also, like an online community or things maybe you didn't feel like you were getting at home. Oh, absolutely. The internet, because I was born in the era where there's no internet. And then as a teenager, the internet was invented. Mm -hmm. We had dial up and 56K modems. And my grandma had the first internet device on our street. And that's when I became enamored in high school with the internet, creating a character, 
legally changing my name and just really running with it. And what were you like in high school? Uh, shy and bitchy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like really good student, straight A's. High school was boring to me and I was starting to really express who I was. I didn't get bullied in high school. I never got beat up. Um, but I just never felt like I fit in in the Orange County world. Mm -hmm. So I would do girls makeup, you know, for their proms. And that's when I really started to like dive in and be like, oh, wow, this is, you know, this could make me money. And I started charging the girls in 12th grade. You're like, okay, I'm going to do your prom hair or yes. your prom makeup. And I just fully went for it. So when MySpace happened, it, uh, to me, it was a lot of when that site blew up, it was a lot of the people's first introductions to a guy makeup. Mm hmm. And then that was just then my whole life changed when that site blew up. And you became you were the most followed person on MySpace I, at a point. Top two. That's yeah. Well, that's wild. Which is crazy. Some of the most viewed pictures on the Internet, my old ones of me throwing up cereal and all these crazy things I would do to start conversations and have shock value were viewed by so many people. Why do you think people were initially drawn to you? Because it was at a time where there wasn't guys in makeup present there was no Marilyn Manson he was like not retired but you know he was out of commission for a few years David Bowie took the makeup off boy George was in jail <laughs> sorry girl and there was so many there was no like there was no man in makeup representing that culture and I think I was that gateway for the new internet world mm -hmm. with the pink eyebrows crazy makeup all the time mini scratch like, I was just gender bending and I was just me and I was a guy that looked very feminine, that pushed a lot of boundaries. Was it difficult to understand at that time why people were so interested in you? Um, like, did you feel chosen at all? It was, it was, it was bizarre. I knew that it was fulfilling. Yeah. Because I was very empty inside and mm -hmm. creating art and doing them and having people connect with how I looked was actually like, it was really shocking. Because I tried to be really offensive back then. So, it was weird. And then as the first few million people started following me and all this thing started happening, it became real, really fast. Yeah. I also wonder, like, at that point in, you know, the Internet's kind of just being born or social media. That, it was, literally. But when you put stuff out there, did you know that it would exist forever? No. Yeah. Because when the Internet first started, you had no idea. Oh, 12, 10, 15, 20 years later. Like the people are going to be able to yeah, access this. Exactly. You don't think about that stuff when it's happening. And how old were you at the time when you were really active on MySpace? Oh, God. 19, 20. Okay. So old. young. Yeah. So super I'm young. 37. Yeah. Which is so crazy. So, yeah. And the Internet's changed tremendously. Mm -hmm. During the pandemic, the Internet changed completely. And now here we are. I think... I don't know. It's an, <laughs> the world is just at such a weird place. I know. I mean, I always talk about this on the show, like just the amount it changes our the way we date, the way we interact, our attention span, our the industries, the way people shop. Like the oh. internet rules the world, and you seem to have ridden that wave. Yes. And continue <laughs> to ride Forever. it. Yeah, I call myself an internet cockroach. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're an internet connoisseur, and Absolutely. I'm excited to jump into that a little bit more in a bit and find out, yeah, advice you have for people who are navigating that world. I think people just have so much fear of trying something new, mm -hmm. and I saw the internet as such a gateway, and so I coined the term internet celebrity. And people, you know, it was like a dot-com era of old guys buying websites and all these things happening, but no one had really utilized their personality yeah. to make money. Mm -hmm. So, Do you feel like you were outlandish on purpose because you saw the result that you would gain more followers, more attention? I, I mean, I think when I was already like that. Okay, <laughs> and so you were like that in when private. When there was a bigger audience, it was like, okay, what's next? And I'm just so good at creating content. Mm -hmm. My brain just gets it. Um, it was really easy. And you also had a like a music career for a hot a second. One. I've done it all. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I started music kind of like as a joke, as like with, a fr you know, some friends. And there was a group on MySpace called Hollywood Undead. I think they're still active. They've had so many records. They've sold millions of, s you know, singles. And I did a song with them and I wrote some stuff and it just blew up without me knowing. Mm -hmm. So I thought I was just going to be a makeup artist. And I was, I quit Mac. I was starting to do celebrities and I was working on people like Kelly Osbourne. This is like such a long time ago. Um, and then MySpace happened. I did some songs as a joke. It was like a, like kind of rappy, electro, like like a 
we'll say an LGBT little Kim type of thing. I was <laughs> okay. really raunchy and it blew up. And then I was like, oh, okay. People are trying to book me for gigs and I had never performed on stage before. So I feel like everything I've set myself to do, I've just taught myself, whether it's being a makeup CEO, a rancher, DJ, any of that, I just taught myself like, okay, the opportunity's here. Either it's gonna go away and some other bitch is gonna get it or I'm gonna take it now. So do I took them all. Do you have moments of self doubt? No. No, never. I don't have Even to when you were young. I was just always fearless and I knew because I've been told no a million times. Okay. So the only doubt I had was my music career when people would belittle me, make me feel like I wasn't good enough and like I wasn't Mariah Carey, but I had a really good tone. It was very like Depeche Mode. A lot of followers. We sold out amazing shows. I sold so much merch, but I never got to that pop star level. Mm hmm. So to me, that was the only time I doubted myself and I had a lot of weird thoughts and then I quit and gave it all up. <laughs> Dude, yeah. this is even before you started your brand, right? Oh yeah. Okay. So I, I quit because I made it all the way from like independent, having fun to being signed by Akon, yeah, being wait, on his label. And at, I, re I, I yeah. read you had a quote there where That's you why. said it was the worst thing you've ever done is be is signing to Akon's label. Yeah. Now, Akon's great as a person, amazing artist, but signing to a more major deal, being caught up in someone else's world, I didn't get to shine and I never got to like have su the superstar to my was craving. <laughs> okay, got it. Yeah. So then you got it in other ways. Mm -hmm. And the the world wasn't ready. I was way too ahead of my time. People weren't they just couldn't like fully grasp it. In those initial years, even on MySpace, did you receive a lot of hate? A lot. I kind of liked it. You liked it. Yeah. It was funny because to me, I didn't get offended by like being called. Are we, we're allowed to cuss and say whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've been called everything across the books, right? When you're a guy in makeup, faggot is the number one thing. It's so easy to say dumb shit like that. So it never bothered me. It just, I always knew it was like a reflection on someone else. Mm -hmm. So it was like, oh, I'm getting a reaction out of them. I love it. Like it turned me on. Okay. So you, you <laughs> felt impenetrable. Yeah. At a certain point. But yes. I feel like you have expressed that when you were younger, you were angry and in a lot of pain. Yes. So how did those from, two from my exist? childhood. So okay. I think I would, let's say I was having scenarios with whoever, that's when turmoil and pain would come out. I would, I would lash out instead of like, come, I don't even know, like, you know, just having normal human emotions, didn't know what those were. Mm -hmm. So... And you feel like those just weren't reflected to you, really? Yeah, and I was like too defensive. Parents? Like if someone, because the old days, well, now I walk down the street, whether it's New York or L.A., and people are like, yes, bitch, work, or they say nothing, <laughs> right? The old days, I'd walk down the street, and it was like, you fucking faggot, you freak, and people would scream out their cars, out the window. Like, it was nuts. It was just a different time. People it's felt like they could do it but it was before the keyboard warriors before you could leave a comment on my photo telling me i'm ugly it was you had to shout it out at me mm -hmm. so once the internet happened the screaming out the window stopped <laughs> which is so weird it's so crazy wild to me though that it didn't affect you that like someone calling you those things that... i think the way i reacted made it very seem like it but i loved lashing back out to get to hurt back mm -hmm. hurt people always hurt others totally yeah how do you feel like that shifted to who you are today? Ooh, that's a good one. I'm falling in love for the first time. Um, I think I was 29. My 30s has been the best time of my life. Mm -hmm. Falling in love with someone actually helped me heal. I got to love myself more. I got to discover myself. And then after that breakup, therapy, moving to Wyoming, taking a break from sharing so much for a year and a half and just really focusing on me. Yeah, your healing Which journey. I never had done before after almost 20 years. So that's really, everyone's like, why the fuck do you move to Wyoming? I just wanted to get away from everyone and just really actually work on myself. And what made not you, lie about it. <laughs> what made you choose Wyoming? Least populated state, cleanest air, and it's just so beautiful. You know, Yellowstone National Park, about 80% of Yellowstone is in Wyoming. People think Montana because the TV show, but it's really Wyoming. Mm -hmm. There's so much nature. I love animals. I have eight dogs. So I surrounded myself with livestock and, yeah, less people. <laughs> Do you feel like there was a breaking point before you moved away? Oh, of course, yeah. And did that coincide with the breakup or it was just like drama? No, your... it was the pandemic, all of our lives being changed. And then that summer, old friends attacking me online and then 
bam, the craziest drama I've ever been involved with. Beauty community is deceased. Everyone's bleeding on the floor. <laughs> um, and most everyone didn't know how to recover. I dusted my heels off. Um, you know, used some oil blotting sheets and kept it fucking moving. And you were like, I'm out of here. Yeah. Can you even, like if you were to sit down with yourself mm -hmm. from four years ago and- What do I think this would be it? So Wyoming was my, my plan at 50 years old. Okay. Okay. Like I'm gonna be old. Fifty's not old, by the way. <laughs> um, I'm gonna be old, and I'm just gonna live in the middle of nowhere and disappear and shave my head. So I did all that, but I kept my internet presence, and I have over a hundred employees. Everyone has bills to pay, um, and you can only be canceled if you cancel yourself. You yeah. know, if you're actually a bad person and you're awful, yes, go away. But I've been, my whole life's been a roller coaster. So I dusted myself off, moved away, actually worked on me, and I just, I've never felt better. Never been happier. Yeah. Well, you're radiating nice. it happiness too. Happiness is so great. And I used to be afraid of happiness, so I would reject it. Like I loved chaos. What do you mean you were afraid of it? I used to be, because I was so used to surrounding myself with craziness and just the, all that energy. Mm -hmm. Like normal joy, I would reject. Would you consider your younger self kind of a bully? Um, no, I wouldn't say that at all. Yeah. What about just like online? Like you enjoyed kind of trolling people though? Yeah. Well, I was good at clapping back. Okay. So like I've never let, I've never like, let's say we're all scrolling right now. I've never left a, a mean comment on someone's page. Okay. That's such a crazy, bizarre concept to me yeah. to like stop out of your day and be like, you're fucking ugly. That's so weird. It's always been weird to me since I was younger to now. I just find it so bizarre. So I've never done that. I'm the queen at clapping back. I, I have a big mouth. I love being shady. And at the end of the day, if I wasn't doing all this, I'd probably be a stand up comedian because I'm fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> and I love laughing. I really love laughing. I'm a big stoner. So no, I'm good at being vicious back, but never the bully. Okay, so you feel yeah. like it's if people come for you, then you'll yeah. react. Yeah, but you know, back. there'll be people that say, you bullied the beauty community. It's like, no, I entered the beauty community as this whole new thing. People were fucking shook, scared. They couldn't believe how fast I was growing. And they all came after me like mm -hmm. the devil. But it doesn't mean I didn't play my role, of course. Totally. You know, you get, you get caught up in the personalities and all the crazy shit and, you know. Well, I'm also, sh I'm sure that there's a level of competitiveness. Oh, yeah too and just living in LA and being in the entertainment world Absolutely. and followers yeah. and, and but there's no one like me so when I didn't view them as competition I think it made them even more mad mm -hmm. and where do you stand with some of those people um they're all dead to me oh okay <laughs> <laughs> okay ba, 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 ba. you're the sniper <laughs> um uh, no I no I actually mean all that <laughs> No, all the people that I used to be friends with on YouTube, I have not spoken to any of them. But I still have friends in the industry like Jacqueline Hill. She's amazing. OG YouTuber. Nikki Tutorials. She's fucking amazing. So it's not like the whole beauty community hates me, but I had a lot of issues with the personalities. Absolutely. Do you feel a, a little bit of resentment towards them? No. Not or that community? No. no. You're on this journey the where you're like, I'm really, separate. It changed everything. Yeah. When, Yeah at the pinnacle of all the drama when it was on CNN and the whole world was like, what the fuck was this? It like ruined it and it took the fun out of everything. Mm -hmm. And I was definitely a part of it, absolutely. Do you feel like t in like today you're n you're not choosing or as drawn to that chaos? Like, do you even clap back anymore? No. no? I think people may see me way more active on social media now. I woke up January 1st and I said, good morning. And I've just been going full hard every single day this year. I'm back to reviewing makeup. You know, I, I, qu I did quit YouTube last year. Um, I was burnt out after almost 10 years. The queen of reviewing needed a little break and a breather. So while I was on my hiatus, the beauty community shifted. TikTok became God, right? Yeah. And it's now ruling the beauty world. No one watches YouTube for beauty. YouTube's not dead. It's still killing it. Um, but the YouTube culture of us all going home and watching YouTube at our on our phone those days are over. So now it's TikTok. Yep. It's the short form. Yeah, people want short form. <clears throat> I love a long form 30 minute review. No one cares. I was also burnt out and I stopped caring. So it was a perfect timing. Yeah. So I jumped on TikTok this year going really heavy, probably for like the last nine months, but I'm back to reviewing stuff and it's nice to be trusted and respected because there's a lot of weird shit going on out there. 
Kid, what do so, you mean? They're just so money hungry. Oh, okay. You know, I always give people the scenario. Well, they'll say, well, I would lie. I would take $100,000 to lie to a bunch of people. Well, I actually wouldn't. Hmm. <laughs> you know, but I feel and that's like people, hard for people to grasp. And people know that about you too, yes. that you have the integrity in that community. Yes. So I came back and everyone's like, thank God. But there are a lot of creators out there lying for cash. And, you know, it's, I think it's short lived. It's not going to be forever for them. And you don't, do you call them out or you don't call yes. them out? Okay, okay. So Which you're means, still. That's not drama where people love to, you know, there's a difference between like, hey, you're literally lying in front of everyone and taking money. No one else is going to say shit. I'm going to say it. Mm -hmm. So versus just saying something to be mean spirited. Yeah. OK, got it. Can you talk me through this burnout a little bit more? Yeah. Like what exactly you were, <laughs> what exactly you were feeling? Oh, OK. I mean, and, and what and like after all the drama happened? I don't know. It, is it this is the drama COVID this is starting like summer 2020? OK, just imagine we're all locked indoors. No one's on the freeways. Everyone is hyper focused on their phones, and then my two old friends make a crazy video full of lies, and it like changed the beauty culture forever. Mm -hmm. So you, were you feeling like depressed during this time? Um, very. Okay. It was like very like at a loss because I I love makeup so much. I love the community. I love everything I was doing, and I just felt like all the fun was literally sucked out mm -hmm. like a vacuum. And I'm like, wow, I really. And I kind of like, you know, I kind of vanished from all my music friends and I fully immersed myself and my whole life became the beauty community and the world and my brand and everything. And I just gave too much. So there was a lot of sense of loss there. And I felt like I could never fully heal living in L.A. anymore. What is it about L.A.? Just because I've lived there for so long, you go everywhere. And I would leave my, my Hidden Hills Mansion gates and it's like there's always someone right there ready to film. And, you know, a lot of celebrities love and crave that. I think it's fun to a certain extent, but it does get old when you actually are, like, going through something really harsh and they just want a picture of you crying in your car or looking upset. And then that picture, it was just spiraling into a whole weird realm and it was getting really dark. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. Yeah, and that's when you decided to leave. Yeah. Was this the time when you started therapy? Yeah. Had you seen a therapist prior? No, when I was like young, maybe like 12th grade. Okay. And then never, yeah. And I never rejected or thought it was a bad idea. I just didn't think I needed it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, I love it. Yeah, it's, it's amazing <laughs> talking to someone. Shout out to Dr. Ryan. I know no one will ever know who that is, but if he ever sees this, um, he really helped me change my entire perspective, helped me heal. And there's a lot of things you can do, whether it's psychology, you know, there's, yeah. I did a lot of stuff. I, what? I did like Chinese medicine where they can like someone could literally give me a massage and like move my body around and like make me release and like cry on the table and like things like that I think are really important. And mm -hmm. I think I'll say normal folks because I look like an alien, but um, normal folks may not understand that there's so many options out there to help your unhappiness because we live in a weird world. We do live in a very weird world and, and it's getting weirder. It too. is. With the politics, with the news, the TV, the TikTok, the everything, it's just very bizarre. So walk me through this therapy journey. Okay. In what sense? Um, give how me, did give you, me a tidbit. Just well, how did you even of. find this person? <laughs> like, what you had an aha moment one day? Did someone come to you, a friend of yours, saying, like, I think you should try therapy, or you just I woke up? I was, so, this is crazy. I'm writing a book right now. Okay. I'm, I'm writing an autobiography. Someone's writing it for me. I've been interviewed for a few years, for months and months. The person writing the book suggested you know because I was like I just don't want to go to some random person and there may be laws and all these things about privacy but I really don't trust anyone mm -hmm. and I've had people whether it's HIPAA violations like I flipped my car and someone in the hospital called TMZ well that's illegal <laughs> I like the attention it was fun but you know I had my back broke and I'm in the hospital and people are trying to take photos so uh, you know so I don't trust anyone so when this person who's writing the book said hey there's this person that has worked with celebrities and people that are, you know, like when, when the A-listers when the are full addicts and things like that. Gotten him back on track and he personally helped me through my divorce. I was like, great. So it was the pandemic. I thought doing therapy on Zoom was a little stupid at first. Mm -hmm. Oh no, amazing. I do it on Zoom. It's amazing. Yeah. But as someone who was afraid to dip my toes in, because I was afraid to heal, because you're so damaged, you don't want to heal. That's how I was. <laughs> and I was afraid of it. So I did a Zoom call, and it was like, 
I, I was like, I was breathing for the first time in like three years. It was amazing. So we did a lot of those sessions and then a lot of breathing work, a lot of healing. I did some stuff where I was on the floor laying down and he put on this crazy trancey music and I was breathing in a certain way and it like purged out all my anxiety and demons and I like cried for 30 minutes. It was, be it was beautiful. So I love stuff like that. <laughs> was it a transformative experience? Like, do you still work with the same therapist? Yeah. Yeah? On and off. And I, <clears throat> did you guys start at the beginning? Like, did you start with your childhood, with your family? Because oh, yeah. there's so many different types of therapy, you there know? Is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So trying to find the roots of the trauma and all mine is childhood and my parents' addiction and all the alcoholism and just neglect and no love. Um, it was nice to find all the roots. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's very scary, but once you get over that hump, it's like the best feeling ever. Did it help your relationship with your mom at all? Um, yes. She is just, she's a character. I mean, imagine who's giving birth to Yeah, people, yeah. Right? She's, she's a Libra. She's, <clears throat> when I say nuts, I don't mean that in a bad way. That's just a figure of speech. She's just very eccentric. And she was a model, right? Yeah. Okay. And she raised me to always just be myself. We weren't raised in a religious family. She was into astrology, actually. Um, and she just said, you know, as long as you have good grades and you're a good person, you can look however you want, think however you want, and do you? The world's your oyster. So she was supportive. Yeah, always. Okay, that's great. Yeah, and she still is. Yeah. <laughs> How often do you guys talk? Um, rarely. A few years ago, I had to put her on pause a little. Okay. Yeah. Why is that? It's just too much. She's always been too much. We have never fully gotten along. Our personalities are very clash. And I'm all, I'm an only child. Mm -hmm. So she gave, she gave birth to one legend and gave up. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, that's enough I always wanted me. a twin or a brother or sister. It never happened. Only me. So... What's yeah. been, like, the biggest takeaway from your experience in therapy? Oh, that there's so much, like we have so much to like to blame. Mm -hmm. And I just, some people just don't want to take responsibility. Okay. And you so, feel like you've learned yes, to do that? Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, the, a lot of, I just, I feel like I just healed the root of why I was angry. I felt like after like five or six sessions with this person, I had a lot of breakthroughs and I finally like the feeling of like wanting to be chaotic it like vanished interesting and it's never came back thank that, that 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 happened so fast yeah. too it was beautiful and you feel like it most of it came from when you were young yeah absolutely. and just feeling like not loved yeah and my mom was some of my grandparents would would help raise me when she was drunk she would resent them because she felt they didn't love her as a kid and they liked and they were caring for me isn't it interesting? It's so it's such a weird dichotomy. And just like how family systems show up and then they like trickle into who you are and how your personality develops and then like how you ended up here today or, and you could have easily probably gone the other direction. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So I think I broke the cycle, thank God. And there's no turning back. Do you have any interest in starting a family one day? No. No. <laughs> I'm so quick to answer. Yeah, no babies. I want to be more, you know, I want to be surrounded by animals, maybe two or three husbands on the ranch, and no kids. Two or three husbands. But, you know, when I when I sleep with a guy that already has kids, single, um, you know, I, I toy with the idea, like, oh, it'd be so cute to be a stepmom, but I'm so busy. I, I would not be, I think I would make a great parent if my life wasn't this. Mm -hmm. But, do yeah, you, I don't have a desire to be a father or a mother. Do you ever have <laughs> moments where you want to take a step step back from this in like a very serious way. I thought I did when I moved to Wyoming and here we are. Yeah, so you missed I really, it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like your community is is your home in a sense? Um, you mean like what community? Which I don't know, your followers and oh, the fans. Absolutely. There's and so many people that have been following me even since day one. And it's amazing that there's still so much support, mm -hmm. you know, with all the turmoil and things that I've gone through, I've grown in front of millions of people, right? Um, it's humbling and so grateful that anyone even still likes me. <laughs> Honestly. You feel that way, right? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Because of like some of the controversies? Yeah, and I just feel like the, the culture, when we're in such a cancel culture, you know, anything, we're gonna dig up everything, you know, with, with every single celebrity, it was a very bizarre time where there was just so much hate 
And I think we're away from that. We realize that people are just human beings. People are allowed to grow and change. Do you feel like some of the things you've said in the past get taken out of context? Depending on what they are, yes. Okay, yeah. Because I, I, yeah. when I was even preparing for this, I like watched a couple of the Shane, Do Shane Dawson. video, yeah, yeah, Dawson videos. The documentaries or just like fun videos we've done. No, the the little the documentaries. Yeah. Um, of just saying like, oh, this sound bite got taken, but if you actually watch the video or you look at the context of like who I'm screaming at, yes. it's like a white person, yes. la la. So it's and just, I think no one ever took the time, but obviously I'm saying something so offensive and awful. Um, it's okay that no one looked, but mm -hmm. yes, it was crazy to be deemed something I'm not over and over and over. Well, the other day you went on a different podcast and you were saying they, them pronouns are stupid. Yeah. And then people immediately associate that with being transphobic. Yeah, which is so weird. I would say that most of, so that clip went very viral. Um, most people got it, did not receive a lot of hate or anything. But there, you know, people did try to flip it for a second. But I'm good at snuffing out the narratives where before I would let people beat me up like a pinata. Immediately I addressed it the next day, said what I had to say, and I meant it. Mm -hmm. Why do you feel the need to address it? Like, do you ever, are you ever like, no, I'm not even going to. It's just funny. Like, I feel like traditional, like yeah. actor, actress, you know, like their PR team would be like, absolutely yeah. do not say anything. Well, I was asked, not, I was put on the spot and I've mentioned it before. That's what's funny is I did impulsive podcast about what, a year ago, nine months. And I said the same shit and we were talking about gender and looking like this. And, you know, all guys want to do is hear about me sucking dick, which is very telling of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it just was talked about. No one cared. I, I, you know, someone from the NFL is fucking me. I start talking to the football players and then they start talking about it. And it just went a whole other direction. But I think because of the climate, the politics, what's happening, I don't know why we're not working on normal things like leaving women's rights alone, more gun control. As a gun owner, there's not enough gun control, but we're focused on he, she, they, them, and all the wrong things. It's very bizarre. We're trying to ban drag shows. Is this a fucking joke? Yeah, and then there's a school shooting like a week ago Every in day. Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. So when there's New York Pride, RuPaul can't perform. No one, No drag queen can perform outside in some of these states now. It's illegal. That doesn't make any sense. I just think they're distracting from, you know, real dark issues. How is Jeffree Star mm -hmm. different than Jeffree Star? How do I say it? My old last yeah. name. That person's dead. Okay. So you don't even... <laughs> no, I legally changed my name because I didn't relate to my family. Mm -hmm. And I, and I to me, I kind of created a character and then I am living and breathing who I am. Um, but it was to deflect, I think, from my past, my family that I didn't like, all the turmoil. So I legally changed my name, and I never looked back. And do you feel like in this healing journey, though, you're able to kind of revisit that a bit more than you were? No. No? I don't even think about yeah. Um, yeah, and that name. And then most people with that last name in my family have passed away. Okay. So actually, two weeks ago, rest in peace, my grandma Mary passed away. She was 105. I'm sorry. She had an amazing, beautiful, crazy life. And she is one of the last Steiningers to exist, which I is know. wild. I know. And where did you get the name Star? Like, what made you choose that name? So it was actually like me trolling people, like on MySpace. My old username used to be the C word. Okay. <laughs> it's not control it's cunt <laughs> um and i always loved that word i remember reading a book a long time ago and it was like the origin of cunt is a strong businesswoman and then society changed it and made it awful and i always thought it was so intriguing and that word would make my mother fucking blip out you could say any other word the c word for some reason made her so angry so that was going to be my name. <laughs> so that was my screen name for a while. And then it was obviously, as things started to grow, that's not a very marketable or safe name. Yeah. So I was like, well, I live in LA now. Everyone that I had come in contact to wanted to be a star so bad. The waitress at the diner, like, I'm an actress. I'm like, but you're serving me pancakes. And there's nothing wrong with that. I used to be homeless. How are you an actress? The culture of LA was so interesting to me when I was so young. Everyone wanted to be famous to me. That was my perception. So when I wanted to change my name, I was like, well, I like JS. It's easy. So I just picked star because everyone wanted to be a star. So it was me kind of like making fun of everyone, never thinking I would be one. Did you want to be a star? Not in that moment. 
Um, I didn't even fully get it. Okay. I just loved doing makeup on people. I loved escaping um, my family. Mm -hmm. And I loved being independent for, I felt like, the first time. Is it addicting? Which part? <laughs> I don't know. Once you reach a certain level of notoriety, does it become like, oh, I just want more and more? Like, if there's moments where you feel like maybe this people... This is sounding like my YouTube era. Because okay. it was all... It was growing more so than ever more yeah. than myspace more than music more than anything it was like the craziest growth in the beauty culture and then mm -hmm. i had the number one youtube channel and there's so many eyes on me it was very addicting to me in a good way and also bad because mm -hmm. they're like oh well if everyone likes drama then i'll do this where i should have like put my phone down but then i also had not great people around me not that i don't have my own backbone but when you're surrounded by friends and they're like yes do this do this do this sometimes you will just do it instead of like I'm going to be quiet today. Like when I look back at some of my crazy Snapchat rants or I'm screaming at my phone, it's like, oh, it's so disgusting. It's like those my old friends would like hype me up. So you the didn't... people that are around me now would be like, let's turn that off and just go have a laugh. This is not that deep. And I don't even have those thoughts anymore. But yeah, it was it was just different times. Do you feel like your identity is at least when you were younger in the YouTube area era? Um like relied on the external validation? Um, half and half. Yeah. yeah, and then is that something you feel like you've had to work on in therapy? Oh, absolutely. And then how do you, how are you able to remove it from these followers and fans and what you're doing online? Remove what part, like? Like your identity and your self-esteem, not being reliant on how people perceive you. Oh, I don't even know if I know how to answer that. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's, that's a great question, I'm just like, I'm just here and I like don't think about that stuff. So I'm I'm trying to articulate how I don't think about it. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know why. I just kind of like, I'm so nonchalant. Okay, so it's not something like you're not having paranoia or the anxiety no. uh -uh. of like, what do people think of me or how oh, are they going to react no. to this video? No, 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 no. no I, and I only do things that I like now. Where before I would do a lot of stuff that was just like, oh, I got to make content or you feel like you have to fill the void or like I haven't uploaded on TikTok in two days and I'm going to be fine. Yeah. Everyone's still there and my career is great. Where before there would be panic, like I have to f feed the machine, you know? Yeah, you're on a hamster wheel essentially, yes. which I'm so sure really- I chose to slow it down and come back in a way that I can't, you know, where I'm happy. And how do you feel like you did that? Ooh, um, unplugging and doing everything different of how I, I used to wake up and check my phone. Am I canceled today? How many millions of dollars have I made on my brand? How many comments do I have? Oh my God. Blah, blah, blah. It was like, just literally wake up and it's like, bam. Hi. Now it's like, I do it when I want to. Mm -hmm. and I'm not a slave to the phone. You so know. you set these parameters for yourself? Yes, I have all these great healthy boundaries. A okay. lot of people think boundaries is a bad word. It's great. Yeah, and that's something you feel like you've developed yes. with the help of this so, therapist? Oh, yeah. So now I wake up and I take my dogs out and I feed them and I enjoy my morning and I stare at this beautiful mountain and all these animals that I bond with. And then I go on my phone and then I film my TikTok reviews. And I don't look at comments anymore. I really don't care. It's great. Wow. How did you come to that? Therapy and just a lot of self-awareness. Okay. Yeah. I thought I was so self-aware, but I wasn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's nice to just post something and just live, mm -hmm. go shopping, meet you. And like my phone doesn't go off anymore. It's so nice. And I changed my number and moved into, you know, middle of the Okay, so you changed your number too. <laughs> oh, so yeah. you all created the, all, the all of these. All the boys, all the old friends, all the old anything, silence. It's great. How has your dating life changed since moving to Wyoming? Uh, more everyone's more horny than ever. Really? Okay, but just like being, <laughs> but being more unplugged and not so like. Do you feel like being so plugged in? It sounds like it was less of a job to yeah. you, and it was more like who you were. Yeah. And your entire identity, your entire world, and now it sounds like yes. you're able to separate the two a bit more. Absolutely. Yeah. And so how how does that play into more of these like vulnerable intimate relationships? Um, I don't do those. Oh, you don't do those? No. Not since your last like serious breakup? <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah, I don't have the desire to. I never planned on falling in love. So when I did, and I had a beautiful five-year relationship. Um, I don't seek another one. I'm currently not feeling loneliness. I don't feel lonely. 
Um, I love having fun with people. And yeah, you know, I'll hang out with someone for a little bit, but I'm also so busy. Mm-hmm. And, I, and guys are, I don't say threatened, but they, I think they would like me to be more accessible. But I'm always on the go. Do you feel like they sometimes feel emasculated by you? Yeah, they in turn a way? into the little bitch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Isn't that? I don't text dudes all day. Who has? I don't have time for all that. I'm busy. I'm working. You know what's so crazy? So. Those I feel like they're into you because they're like, oh, you're successful and you're doing this and, and you're. Then I see how hard it is. And then if if I'm not, so I, I used to date guys or hang out with people of of you know all statures financially, and a lot of people think this is offensive. But I don't hang out with broke dudes anymore. Who wants to hang out with someone that you're always paying for everything? Okay. You know. So it's not about the money. I come from literally fucking dirt, right? If you don't know my story, I, uh, my family has zero money. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's just I don't want to hang out with someone that's dirt broke that can't afford to drive to my house. Okay. I'm too old for that. Yeah. That's a little 20 year old game. Well, do you feel like it's mo- it's more or less so the like splitting the bill or paying for everything and more the dynamic and the power dynamic? And someone actually like having a real job and like being financially set. I love buying dinner. I love gift you know i love buying gifts and making someone feel good but it's nice to be you know reciprocated mm-hmm. and I'm so too you're adult for that now and unless it's just you know a cute one night stand i don't care if you have zero dollars or a million you know and do you still have a relationship friendship with your ex no oh no Mm-mm. okay i feel i thought you did <laughs> I feel no. like, i'm like of my research that i did <laughs> no 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 Mm-mm. and that's okay for you yeah 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 it's great I feel like you come off online um, or even in the Shane, I'm going to talk about that documentary again, that it's difficult for you to be vulnerable. Like, I feel like that was kind of the first time you talked about. It used to be. Absolutely. And Shane actually helped me um, get over that as well Mm -hmm. because I felt so comfortable and safe with him. I loved his content. I loved his docuseries he had done before with other people Um, and just spending intimate time with him. I knew I could trust this person. This wasn't a reality show where they they were going to manipulate me later on edit, which yeah, is so, take some clip. so easy to do. Hello. Um, and it was so authentically me. And he didn't play any games and just really wanted to show this different side yeah. of you, which I feel like you guys did yes. very, very well. And if you get to the end of the first one and you go to my old apartment where I had a lot of crazy psychological That's, uh, I watched that unhealthy one. moments. Um, I was never going to go back there. Are you kidding me? And I felt so comfortable. And after a week or two of talking about it, he not convinced me, but I felt safe enough to go back to my old apartment Mm -hmm. where I was cutting my body, doing all these crazy things um, and actually go in there. But I was like, fuck no. When I heard the idea. (laughs) Yeah. And And that was the first time you opened up about self harming. Yeah. And that's not something you still. Oh, no. No, this was a long time ago. And it was that a part of this therapy journey, too? Kind of revisiting that time? So when you know it's so funny? It's not funny, but I I use humor a lot to uh, make things dark light. Um, I went to therapy for the first time when my mom discovered cut marks on my arms. Okay. I was great at hiding them. I was very into, like, looking gothic, punk rock. It would be 90 degrees out, and I'd have a full sweater. No one ever asked. And that's just his thing. I was just hiding hundreds of cuts all over myself so one day i was doing the dishes because she made me do chores bitch um <laughs> and um no you know every i was an only child she was a single mother so she worked a lot to obviously pay the rent my responsibility to help clean a lot she came home early i had a i had a short sleeve shirt on lord jesus so the first inkling of therapy was that and then when the therapist this is actually really fucked up but good um the therapist found a lot of the roots and my mother was a lot of the problem so when my mother found out that she was a problem she didn't let me see the therapist anymore oh whoa Mm -hmm. how did she even find out what you guys talked about well the therapist was also seeing my mother oh okay Okay. i was in 12th grade so it's like i'm a my minor you know what i mean so it, it was crazy and i had never seen a therapist since until a few years ago. Yeah, I'm sure you were traumatized. It was just, it was interesting and sad that I, I almost found it comical that they told my mother, like, you know, like, hey, the kind of roots in your behavior, and she didn't want to take any responsibility. So. Do you feel like in her older age now, like, has she taken accountability for some of the stuff you went through <laughs> when you were younger? Mm, a little. 
Okay, but we've not made much. a little progress. Okay. Yeah. Do you feel like maybe? But she has to go through her own journey, and I can't be upset that she doesn't fully acknowledge everything yet. That's her. That's her thing. Totally. Sometimes we just have to love and accept people for who they are. Who? What a concept. I know. Right? It's a difficult it's hard. one. It's it really, is. really hard, and it can yeah. be really painful when you can't like change someone, especially if you're working so hard on changing yes. yourself. I think that everyone should have the same progress as you. My old thoughts. I'm projecting. Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel? So like yeah. That had any influence on when you were younger, and you and maybe it was more difficult for you to take accountability. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. It was really hard for me when I was younger to even say sorry. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Saying sorry was painful. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Like when, my, like when your parents would be like, you need to apologize. I would look at my mom like, bitch, are you out of your fucking mind? You say sorry to me. You made me feel like that. And I wouldn't. Uh-uh. It was like pulling teeth. And then that obviously... Mm-hmm. I'm, like, you gave, I'm like you gave birth to me you're the one that should be sorry <laughs> then that became also this internet online persona yeah. that, and probably you know this and then inability also, to say sorry I also lied and told the whole internet that my aunt was my mother what do you mean I, I know it's not like some <laughs> weird fucking Netflix documentary as my YouTube rise of fame happened right this is like the start of my brand I, I launched Jeffree Star Cosmetics 2014 right okay. we're eight years old now a year after I started the YouTube channel and to be more accepted or to have a cast in my life, I started to tell people, because me and my mom weren't speaking at the time, um, that my aunt, my dad's brother's wife, not even blood related, that that was my mother. We would take pictures and And posts. she was game with it? Oh yeah, sick bitch, absolutely. <laughs> okay, do you guys, yeah, do you guys still talk? Loved it. Do you still talk to her? Sure don't. <laughs> okay. Sure don't. Mm -mm. So, yeah, which obviously really hurt my mom. <laughs> but it was a whole perception thing. So, yeah, people really thought that my aunt was my mom for years. And then I I almost regret telling everyone because during the pandemic, after drama and all these things happened, I kind of let in some insights like, hey, this is fake and this is fake. And then it just made things worse. Why did it make things worse? I don't, people wanted to be hateful. They loved that there was maybe something else wrong with me. Okay, so like for example, <laughs> when you were open about the aunt and mom, yeah, thing, oh, were then it's about I'm it? lying about everything. Now he he he's drunk all the time. He's just I don't know why he's saying you know, crazy things like that. And I'm like, N and then this is so dumb. This is thank God this society uh, culture thing's over. I did a video recreating uh, old tutorial from like the 20s, and I said, and my me and my grandma I let her pick the tutorial. My grandma was 103 at the time. I titled the video. My hundred-year-old grandma, da, da 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 you lie about everything. So once I said that my aunt wasn't real, then it was your grandma actually isn't real. It was, and then it just became this weird thing. And this is when <laughs> you were still reading comments. Yes, and, you, and it was just like it was. It was like probably like twenty twenty. Yeah. And would it give you like anxiety? Would you wake up in the night? Ever? It was just sad because it was just the you can't change people's perceptions and you can't change the. I mean, you can, but. In that moment, it was like, oh, okay. I thought I was revealing something, to, but I, I did it for me to move on. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like and you've I had... I actually had guilt that my mom felt so awful that I said someone else was my mother. It kind of made me chuckle, but it's a little evil. So I felt like I needed to validate my mom and let everyone know, honestly, hey, this other person's not my mom. So she could heal, so. And do you feel like that helped your relationship? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And I said, sorry. Yeah, you told her you're sorry. Yeah. 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 And I told the internet, sorry for lying. Okay. I feel like, how long have you been <laughs> doing these apology videos? Oh, forever. Since I was an infant. Okay. But I came out the womb. Sorry, I'm not a girl. But you're saying it was it was difficult for you to apologize and mean not it. Back in the day. It was. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Would you ever do apology videos that you didn't really mean because you felt like no. that's just what your community wanted? No. No. Okay. No, absolutely not. It was like if I genuinely felt like something, I would sit down, record it. And then the apology videos became obviously a joke because a lot of my old friends after me would do videos and there was fake crying and all these crazy things. And it just made it all a joke. Mm -hmm. It made all of our pain a joke and it made the beauty community so stupid. Yes, Doja. <laughs> um, do you feel like you you are able to be vulnerable, more vulnerable now that you've gone through therapy with the people who are close to you in your life? Yes, which is great, absolutely. And even online a little bit more. Like, I, you know, like I also went through a journey of, 
After the self-reflection and healing, I then looked in the mirror. Mm -hmm. I dissolved all my fillers. I stopped doing laser hair removal. And I just kind of like let myself be more natural in me. I felt like I was looking too plastic. I know it's funny. I look like this. But <laughs> it was just, it was a lot. So now I feel like I just, this is me. This is my real lips. This is my real face. It's nice. I haven't gotten Botox in a few years. I can move my face now. Um, and I just feel more like human. Why was that important to you? Because I feel like it was shedding the old Jeffrey that I had just put in the grave. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like I was looking at the Jeffrey that I had just moved on from. Do you feel like shame related to that Jeffrey at all? No. 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 I think it was. Have you forgiven that Jeffrey? We're still forgiving her. Okay. They, her, him, them. That's what you're working on right now? <laughs> um, Loosely, I'm honestly so happy and traveling again has been so fulfilling for me. Mm -hmm. I took seven months off from traveling. I just stayed at the ranch, filmed. Everyone came to me. We shot makeup campaigns there, hair, makeup, friends, family, everyone, all business. They came to the ranch. I need to hear about this ranch. We shoot guns, we raise livestock, um, and we have the best time. It seems like the largest shift, though, in the world from what you were, how you were living a few yeah. years ago. I think everything I do is extreme. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, well, here we are. So I bought the biggest house in LA, you know. Do you ever miss it? No. You don't miss that life at all? Mm -mm. No. It was a little lonely. Yeah. And Wyoming's not lonely? No, it's so great. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Like, I wake up every morning, and there's just animals and yaks. If you don't know what a yak is, they're a Tibetan <laughs> cow, basically. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I love it. And people got pissed at you for making jerky, right? Mm, I think it was a... Sh uh, there was this weird shift of like me kind of announcing, hey, I'm uh, butchering animals, right? I make vegan cosmetics. Should makeup be tested on animals? Absolutely not. Should be tested on straight guys. You should have a little bunny in the lab getting tortured. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so to me, uh, raising an animal from pasture to plate with no hormones, you know, three companies own all of our food. So all the cereal is poisoned. That's a whole nother conversation. I'm raising animals, grass-fed, no antibiotics, no anything, and it's just healthy, amazing meat. And I think in a time where you don't know what's happening with our food and all these weird things, um, it's great. And so is that another passion of yours that you've always yeah. had? Have you been no, interested in the food industry? Not really. I just wanted to be out in the middle of nowhere. And then once I healed and started realizing what Wyoming was and I had all this land, I was like, I want to raise animals. So I think when I started buying yaks it was never the journey to like create a steak mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> once i learned about yaks the niche market how healthy the meat is 95 percent fat free full of nutrients so amazing and delicious i said oh i maybe want to do this because i make everything a business yeah that's what i was and i can't think. help it i moved there for solitude i'm now in seven restaurants i have the number one burger in all of wyoming the star yak ranch burger at fire rock hi um, and it's fucking nuts and I love it. And it's so like, I'm obsessed with it. Well, you're an entrepreneur and I do everything full. So I have the most diverse yak ranch in America besides China. Now we have the most different genetics, different colors. <laughs> Would you Kinda like my eyeshadow palettes? We have a full array from the <laughs> orgy palette to blood money. Um, <laughs> you're good. Yak's healthy. So okay. I'll definitely have to send you some. We can cook it. We can send you the jerky. Oh, you could send me like a steak yeah. in the mail? So you can buy our jerky and our meat online. Okay. Um, and we are opening our first physical store in Wyoming. It's the first of its kind. It's makeup and meat. What's next? Like separate from makeup? Ooh, well, like, would you take this restaurant? Would you open them across the country? Would you? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, I want to do a fast food chain. Okay. So this hybrid store buying frozen meat and makeup is going to be really cool. There may be one in New York one day. You never know. What do you mean hybrid store? So you can go into the store and you, it's a full Jeffree Star store. So you can go in and buy a steak and a mascara in one transaction. 
and wow. and we come out um, <laughs> early June. So it's like I'm already a makeup mogul. I now you know raise animals and I'm selling all this meat. It's like well I want to I want to combine it. Mm-hmm. So you'll be able to go inside and buy a lip gloss and a T bone, Miss Girl. <laughs> and when does this open? Uh, early June in Casper, Wyoming. In early June, so yeah. coming right up in like yeah. two months. We're we're trekking away. We got major construction. We're downtown. I bought the coolest building. And it's just, it's amazing. So you feel like roots are set, like you plan on staying in yep. Casper. I just went through my third winter. Okay. And how? They thought the Californian wouldn't last through one. But you did it. We're, thir- we're through three. Well, me and my ex lived in Michigan part time. So I was already attuned to the snow and the wind. And I think they just thought I was just some LA little bitch and I just couldn't hang. And I'm like, no, I'm tough as nails. <laughs> and you had this awful car crash. I did. I'm laughing because it's been two years now. Wait, what's the date? April 16th was, t- it'll be two years. So. so in a week. Yeah. Come on, memories. So I got a little free roller coaster ride as my introduction to Wyoming. But that was, see, it was traumatic. It was nuts. Yeah, I, I hit black ice worse than ever and I had in Michigan. I was, go- you know, I wasn't speeding and the I went down a snow bank and hitting the bank flipped my car mm-hmm. and I had never flipped a car before, you know, and it was, it was crazy. Did you feel like you were going to die? No, it happened so fast. It was just the excruciating pain. I partially broke my back. I cracked two vertebrae um, and it was nuts. But the, the like vertigo of a, a car is spinning and flipping was n- insane, but it was just over so fast. And then my neighbor found us on the side of the road. It was nuts, yeah. And you also said in some interview that mm-hmm. a lot of people said, like, some not-so-nice things. Oh, months later, yes. They were like, uh, I don't even know. Like, that we faked it or something. And like, uh, okay. <laughs> can you imagine? I, uh, listen, I don't know who else would ever do that, but that was one of the craziest things and times of my life. That was in, like, very in the middle of the healing journey, and I wasn't even posting much. Mm-hmm. So, you know. When it when it when I'm involved, there's always going to be some crazy story involved sometimes. So, I feel like for some people, those moments of I don't know breaking your back or getting in a serious car crash oh, can be it. can be, no, but can be life altering. Oh yeah. Are you a spiritual person at all? Yeah, and I I live every day like it's my last. So to me, I'm always just go go go. So when my when I didn't need surgery or pins in my back and I just had to wear a brace. I was in wigs doing interviews with Us Weekly two weeks later, like in a full balm on gown with the back brace on top. I was like, oh, we're making the most out of this. I've My whole life, I've made content out of it. So to me, I was like, oh, well, I guess we're going to run with it. You know, I'm wearing a brace and I'm actually in pain and my assistant's ripping me out of bed every morning to pee. But no. we're still going to fucking laugh at it. What else are we going to do? Cry every day? So it was strenuous. Um, yeah. And here we are. How do you take care of your mental health right now besides therapy? Um, taking a lot of time for me instead of just saying yes to everything. Mm-hmm. Um, doing a lot of anal, doing a lot of ass to mouth. Did you I do think. anal last night? <laughs> sure did. Really? I don't know how I'm even. I walked here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would never cancel on you, so we did go chair me in. <laughs> yeah. Oof, that tank. Lord. Oh, yeah. I could, yeah, I could take about twelve inches, and then after that, you got to call someone else. So is is not using humor to cover everything up something that you try to work on or something? No, I'm just such a Scorpio. Like if there is a dick in this room right now, I'd suck it this instant. Yeah. So do you have someone you hook up with in New York? Um, or you just, like, I'm a, are... I'm a world traveling hoe. Okay. Yes. So you're not in a relationship right now? No, I'm single. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Single, already mingling. So where did you meet this person yesterday? Oh, I've oh, had I've had someone here person. for a few okay. days that flew in, and then when they're tired, there's someone from the Starbucks Reserve that I met the other night. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's always nice to have options. He is a Trenta. Mm-hmm. A what? I like he, Trenta. His, I saw his nudes. Very big. Not grande. What's a Trenta? Not venti. Oh, a Trenta. Yeah. Oh, it's a big dick. Always, yeah. So when girls say it doesn't matter about the size, fucking liar. You don't think it's the motion in the ocean? You think it's the size of the wave? Um, I think it's both. Because when it's so small and you're and you're moving like an ocean, I'm feeling nothing in my <laughs> little, I, I've, <laughs> like I don't want a canoe, I want a fucking Titanic. So okay. <laughs> if a little canoe's in there, it's like, I may knit a sweater for my grandma or check my DMs if it's, 
you know, so I don't, I don't bother with the little ones. But how do you find out beforehand? You always have to ask and, and I need a photo. Really? Before yeah. you fuck someone, you ask them for a photo? Yeah. And they will comply? Always. Guys are just, they're horny. Yeah. I guess Because you like to know what you're getting into. You don't you. want to be disappointed and it's like, you know, wow, what am I going to do with that? Floss? You it's know? Just, it's so. just very different, I feel like, for straight women. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know anyone who would ask, like, every person they sleep with for a photo. Oh. And I feel like a woman, huh. for a lot of time, <laughs> wouldn't send a photo. Interesting. Okay. 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 When's the last time you cried? Ooh, um, last week. What? Why? My grandma died. Oh. <laughs> sorry. As I laugh. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I, I, I cried and shed a tear and we were playing old videos and I was like, damn, that bitch had such an iconic, amazing life. Like, born in 1917. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's the crazy. Fuck? Do you feel like she understood and got you? Yeah, she was uh, unreal. So when my dad passed, they cremated him. Half the ashes went to Santa Catalina Island in California. Um, and she had the other half, which I never knew. So six months ago, she gave me the other half. Mm. So what was that experience like? Beautiful. She, she knew that I think that maybe the end was near. Um, so she gave me a lot of old stuff and my dad's social security card and all these cool memories and like photos that they had never, not that they kept them from me, but sitting in the closet mm -hmm. pictures I'd never seen of my dad before. They were so cool. So, and do you feel like that's been helping the healing process a bit? Yeah. Just having access to that stuff? Absolutely. So I think it was also healing for her, like, here's all these amazing memories. I don't think she meant to hide them. I just think she was good. You know, they just, they're up there in the closet. Does it feel like it brings a more positive light to your dad's legacy? Absolutely. I think just focusing on the death and why he died. It's like, well, what about all the good stuff? You know? Mm -hmm. it's, <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised that you have a lot of memories because five is really young. Is it? Yeah. I don't know when is normal like, to remember things. I feel like but five like, is, well, I, just, I, I don't know. Well, I remember that my mom, the day she told me he passed away, I just was like, oh, wow, okay. Well, I knew it was coming, and I literally blinked. We're at the park, and I go, can I? Can we just go get more ice cream? That's what I told her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was nuts. And do you feel like that was just a way to deal with the difficult emotions, or you didn't even no, feel super connected? I don't think connected? when you're five you even know what death is fully means maybe unless your whole family gets taken out you know there's some crazy stories on the news but like i don't think i fully got it i'd already seen him not looking well so it's kind of like maybe expected if you even know how to expect things at five you know yeah do you feel like your mom was able to help you process no that experience no she was too damaged herself okay oh yeah yeah she couldn't help me heal uh-uh <laughs> which was unfortunate, yeah. obviously, back then, because you hold it all later when you're an adult, so. I don't regret any of it. I think it made me who I am mm -hmm. to be this strong, and I think we all of our journeys are our own. Yeah. Do you have any words of advice for people who are listening who are also on their healing journeys? Don't be afraid. I think fear and being afraid is the number one killer. Like, so many people have doubt, but it's hard to say, well, we'll just get past it. Like, enjoy the fear and move past it. Whether it's you want to start a new job, you want to quit, you want to even start your journey of therapy, or you even or you want to f make amends with people in the past. I think that when you get older, you realize the, we're moving quick, right? Life's moving so fast. So, do you make amends? Be the best version of yourself, and try new things. So many people get stuck. So I meet people a lot, and they go like, "Well, how do you just go?" And you just have to go. You know, I just, I was told you can't do a makeup brand. Like what? And here we are. Mm -hmm. But I was told no my whole life. And I just think I'm good at being strong. <laughs> I persevered through it all. So it's like be inspired by me and know that anything is possible for anyone. Cause I, I made diamonds out of dirt. And you still are. And now I'm a diamond in the muff. How do you continue to stay on top in, I feel like, Every week I see a new person launching a line. Like yep. it's, you know, it's every celebrity and their fucking mother. So oversaturated. Those t those times are going away. Thank God. I actually think I inspired a lot of people to start a brand because mm -hmm. I, I made it look easy. I really did. Um, but there's so much work and sacrifice behind the scenes. And I gave up everything for this company. It is literally my entire life. Um, Talk it's, me through that a little bit. It's just been beautiful. Well, I never knew when I created Three Shades in my little apartment 
I would be a, a makeup mogul. I've sold over 20 million lipsticks. Um, when me and Shane collabed, we broke makeup history for cosmetics and sold the most eyeshadow palettes in 12 hours, which was over 1.2 million units. Wow. It was fucking nuts. So I always have to keep it fresh and I like to start the trends. So I may be a little late sometimes. Oh, you know, liquid blush is out. Okay, great. It's trending. I'm gonna make it better than everyone else. Okay. And I love doing that. I love going into the lab and I'm hands on. So later I'm actually gonna go work on a new product um, in New Jersey where one of my manufacturers is. They created my concealer. Um, and now we're working on something new and I just love being hands on and I like seeing what's on the market and being like, okay, let's make it softer, prettier, more pigmented, longer wearing, um, and giving the customer the best experience. So when you hear my name, whether you love or hate me, you know the product is fucking A1. Did you have anyone in the business world that you kind of looked up to or who helped you? Didn't look up to anyone. Um, when I needed some extra money to start the production of the lipsticks, mm -hmm. my friends got too weird and jealous and pulled out at the last minute, including Akon, including Kat Von D, which were those two were going to be investors. Thank God they weren't. Can you imagine the course of my life? Girl, I'll be back at the mall working. <laughs> so I met someone um, from the music world and I said, hey, I need some extra money. Do you believe in this vision? And I told them the plan. And they said, absolutely. I, I, and they had nothing to do with makeup. They're a trademark lawyer for three, uh, for 30 years. Um, and they were your first investor or one of yeah, your first investors? My only, my only. Oh, wow. We launched, I paid him back in one hour. And <laughs> instead of getting rid of him, I got closer to him. Um, while I was creating and learning how to be a boss, he helped me stay financially smart. Because in the MySpace world, I spent all my money. I had tax evasion, all these crazy things. When you're in high school, they don't teach you a fucking thing. How to be a boss, do your checkbook, be an entrepreneur, care for yourself. You don't learn any of these skills. You're just thrown into the world. Be a, you know, be a slave to college, be in debt forever. Oh, no, 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 no. So I taught myself from the ground up how to be a CEO. And with this guy's help, his name is Jeff, so Jeff and Jeffrey, um, we turned this brand into magic. And so he's, he's still a part of it yeah, in some way? Yeah, I am way? the majority owner. So people always ask that question. Okay. I am the majority owner. No company owns my brand. I make the final decision on everything. Um, and it's beautiful. We have a really great partnership. Would you ever sell your brand? Uh, I toyed with it. The thing that happens with that, like brands like Too Faced, um, is like when the, when the Estee Lauder, whoever it is, buys you, mm -hmm. They want cheaper ingredients. They want to make more money. Yeah, they change they tarnish the, the vision. Yeah. I don't think you can be someone as outlandish and weird as I am making the orgy palette and having someone else ruin my vision or oh, it's a little uh, like I have a lip balm coming out with this collection called Pastel Cum. Like it's fun <laughs> <laughs> and it's amazing and it moisturizes your lips and it's very springtime and it has glitter on it. Um, and I just don't want my vision to ever be tarnished or cheapened. And I, my gut says that's what's gonna happen. Have I been offered $500 million in the past to sell? Absolutely. And you said no? I never started this company to be rich. I just wanted to be able to pay my bills, be happy and be creative. I never pictured being covered in Louis Vuitton, being able to wake up and not have the fear of how I'm gonna pay my light bill, which was like my biggest fear for so long. The government froze my checking account when I was younger. It was the craziest thing when I started this company. I was never pictured it like this. Mm -hmm. What What do you feel like the key to your success is? Being authentic. Okay. Hundred percent. Yeah. Being fully just transparent and truthful and just me. The good, the bad, all of it. The good, the bad, the ugly, the sexy. That's right. The ugly is <laughs> important. It is important. I like that. People it's are scared also kinda, of the It's scary, though. It's scary to put yourself out there and yes. to continually do it and for you to step back into the limelight. Yes. I showed so much, so I thought if I didn't show enough, people would stop caring, mm -hmm. and they're still here. Do you feel that internal pressure? Would you say you're you're a harsh critic to. of yourself? Um, I know what gets the job done, so I don't think I'm harsh anymore. Okay. I'm more easy on myself. Yeah, and that. Mm -hmm. But you used to be. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. 
I think with so much growth and new new followers, new money, new everything, it's it's hard to process sometimes. There's no handbook on how to handle any of this. How has your lifestyle changed being in Wyoming? Like, do you still have the glitz and the glam and the cars and that stuff? Absolutely. Or, or you feel like you don't care as much about it? I stopped caring as much when I really focused on me, but now I have fun. Like, when I used to be depressed, I would just shop for hours. Mm -hmm. Where now I shop and enjoy my time, and I don't fixate on so many things. Now it's, it's just, I just love being around nature. <laughs> nature is so healing when people would tell me like just take your shoes off put your actual feet on the ground and just be with nature I'm like girl y'all sound so stupid it's really healing <laughs> and so you're not all dolled up every single day when you're in Wyoming no I do do a lot of makeup reviews now so if the product receives a Jeffree Star approved check mark we wear it throughout the day and if it's hideous we wipe off but no I still I'll go out you know there's still bars and clubs in Wyoming we're not just hanging out with cows at night <laughs> so I still have a glamorous I am the glamour of of Wyoming yeah you bring yeah. the you bring the glamour to the whole state the pink Rolls Royces are there the fake eyelashes are there the nails don't come off so I'm very me but I'll have a beard and flannel the flannel is just from Ferragama Mm -hmm. Do you think you could live anywhere else again? Um, well, I guess, well, we're, we're going to leak my plans next year. Next year for a few months, I'm moving to Europe. Oh, really? And you just got back from Europe? Yeah, I'm in love with it. I'm obsessed. Did you just go to any of the places that you think you're going to move to? Um, near, nearby. Are you moving to a yak farm in Europe? No, I w there's actually a lot of yaks, like in Italy. Switzerland has yeah. amazing yaks. Um, I am working with the USDA of America and the University of Wyoming to import semen from other countries so the genetic diversity of America has a way better chance of survival with no inbreeding. I'm like okay, but fully, of yaks. Yes, I'm okay. fully invested into the yak world. You're like I am <laughs> importing mm -hmm. just some Italian cum. Oh, <laughs> well, I guess if I swallow, is that importing? <laughs> I don't know, but no. Can, uh, are you allowed to say where you're going in Europe? I'm toying with either Switzerland or Italy. Okay. Yeah. But one of those two places. Yes, and you can. Uh, I currently manufacture makeup in Europe, so I think it'd be fun to just. Get away, be around a new culture longer than a week, create some amazing cosmetics, and come back inspired. How many different places do you produce your makeup? Um, with states and countries, I'd say about currently like 10. Wow. Yeah. And so not all in one place? Mm -hmm. What? Why? It's just different manufacturers specialize in certain things. Okay, so like, like one's a the Italians all the lipsticks. The Italians have the best baked highlighter formulas to get this crazy wet diamond look they're not doing it in america they just don't have the technology it's bizarre how do you find these places just contacts traveling okay. there's big trade shows so in, ju in june there'll be a huge trade show in paris every brand and manufacturer comes and we all meet like an illuminati cult but for lip gloss <laughs> do you feel like you since going through the kind of breakup with a lot of your friends, mm -hmm. you have walls up, or do you let new people in? Uh, rarely, yeah. What I used to let too many people in. Okay. So I was like, hey, we're all gonna be friends and be great. Now I'm like, oh no. But how so, do you how do you walk that middle ground where you're like, I'm not being too. I'm really great at being someone's acquaintance. So it's difficult for you yeah. to get like emotionally close to people? Absolutely. Is that something you want to work on? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I love my circle. Having new friends is hard because people nowadays are just, no, they're nuts. People are just crazy. Or their intentions are bad. And when you're someone like me, you just never know, you know? What if it's someone who's like not in that realm or that world? That's very all? Wyoming, which is fine. So I can okay. hang out with like a police officer or a farmer. And like, I know they're not gonna secretly take a photo of my house and we can just all be cool and just neighbors. Yeah, I have some really cool neighbors. <laughs> but you don't feel like you meet people where you're like, okay, maybe I don't really have, I should let this. My life's weird. Cause you imagine like, I don't know where I'd be in that scenario. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not gonna go to a bar after this and like meet a stranger, you know? I don't know. My maybe. world's very like, it's just different. Not in a bad way. It's just very contained and isolated, but I like that. Mm -hmm. 
So like even when you were just in Europe though, and mm-hmm. you're like going to the factory, or you like meeting people who produce the makeup. Everyone, like... yeah, very hands on. I, I we went to Italy. We went with the makeup labs. We went to Paris. I even went to Italy and met with Beretta, who manufactures guns. And I had a full European tour. So yeah, I love meeting people and interacting, but like the guy making my moisturizer, we're not gonna be besties. Yeah, but what about the person who owns the company that makes the moisturizer? Just we kidding. have we, we, <laughs> You're like, good I'm acquaintances, smart. we have respect. <laughs> they love that I give them so much business, but we're not besties. <laughs> okay. And you have eight dogs waiting for you at home. I do. My dogs are like my kids, so I don't want actual children. These are my kids. Do you think that that could possibly change? Mm, it could, I don't wanna ever say no. Um, maybe, maybe I'll fall in love again and my full, I, my full outlook will change, mm-hmm. but currently no. Do you feel like you're open to love again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm open. Yeah. But I'm not searching. So like last time, if something's going to come hit me like a wrecking ball in a great way, then let's go. And the last relationship came and hit you at, like a wrecking ball in or a, you... in a great way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you just met. Cause like, it was randomly. so unexpected and I just thought I was going to hook up with Nate and then it turned into a real love so quickly. And it's hard when you meet someone to just be really comfortable. And it was like, the moment we, our souls connected, it was like, I'd known him forever. It was very bizarre. I know it sounds so cheesy and like a Nicholas Sparks fucking novel, but I finally had that moment and it was so beautiful. Yeah. How do you let people, like even the people who work with you, how do you let people in and not let that paranoia just time teeter you? Time, like prison. You're like time, time and NDAs, no. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, an NDA is an NDA. Someone can sign one and still run their mouth. I think it's spending time with someone and really knowing and have, you know, and when people have, like, my crew, my makeup artist of 10 years, my hairstylist is with me for years, and they'll all fight, and we'll fuck everyone up together. Someone tries them, or they try me, we got, we're going. You know, so it's hard to find that camaraderie. Yeah, I mean, it's like and We laugh a lot. I don't want to hire someone where we have to, oh, we got to pretend we're something else. It's like, we're all just fun. We laugh all day. Is it hard though when people are working with you and you're essentially paying a lot of them to feel like it's an even friendship or that they can tell you when they feel like you're being fucked up? I found some really good ones. Okay, like not not having yes men surround you. I used to do that. Okay. Absolutely. And this, yeah, n- never again. I used to have people around me that would just yeah, like the people that pump me up to do, you know, bad or negative things. So I think I've spent a lot of time healing where I didn't want to have any more weird energy. So mm-hmm. you may see a few people drop off or I unfollow. And to me, it's so weird how the world makes an unfollow like World War Three. It's like it's OK to move on from someone and not work together and not hate each other. That's mm-hmm. normal. Mm-hmm. But I think when it involves me, it's not normal. <laughs> <laughs> So, but yeah, I have a great crew. I love it. We love all traveling. We've known each other for years and I'm finally at a really good place. And you feel like you they can be real with you and you yes. can be real with oh, them. Oh, they put me in my place. Oh, they really? They also put other people around me in, in their place. Okay, good. Mm-hmm. Good for all of us. There was a point in my life when I was younger where I, and not that it's anything similar, but um, it's it's difficult to have hear feedback yes from other people mm-hmm. and like uh you and know, not just be offended or upset or and take defensive it so negative. defensive that that's it i know and like allow it to affect your self-esteem like yes. oh if someone who's this close to me and loves me is telling me that i'm doing something wrong then like i not take it as an attack yes isn't that nice to articulate things normally? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not the most articulate. My last thing I wanted to end on is like redemption arcs. And okay. if, if you feel like they're necessary for societal progress as someone. Oh, I don't know if redemption is. Some some people are saying I'm having a redemption by reviewing beauty again and coming out of the woodwork like the crack in. But <laughs> to me, a scenario on TikTok of someone lying about a product, um, re-inspired me to want to review again. So I don't know if I've had a redemption. I think that I've had a lot of self growth and it's cool that my audience and millions of people left. People forget that I'm very humbled. Millions of people unfollowed me. It was really humbling and great actually in the moment. Yes, it was awful. I cried my eyes out and I felt like the whole world was over because that, you know, YouTube and beauty was my entire life. Um, but looking back, it was very humbling, really great. And I'm just grateful that people are still here. They've seen my journey. 
um, and they still fuck with me. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Why do you <laughs> think you're so polarizing? Why do you? <laughs> <laughs> I always ask everyone else that. I just look in the camera and I'm like, this is it. <laughs> this is it. I'm just me and I'm always gonna be me and I'm always gonna be honest and I always say how I feel. Yeah. I've never <laughs> sugarcoated anything unless it was a penis with whipped cream on it. Anything else besides that is 100% me. You've said things 10 years ago that People's you would never are say now. To change, and I think n people don't want that. Maybe they do now. Mm -hmm. But as a society, I think people were afraid of progress. Well, you said that. That's who you are forever. So you need people like me to go, no, you actually can heal. You don't always have to be negative and you can grow as a person. That's, that's okay. Okay, any words to any naysayers out there? What would you say to someone who just doesn't get you? They don't, they don't understand. It sounds harsh. I never care. So I think if you are someone that is struggling with finding positivity, um, look at someone like me because I've been through so much and you can pick up yourself every time. If you're a good person, you're a good person. Um, and I'm the testament that you can literally do anything you want with your life. And I think that's that's special and people resonate and they've seen me come from nothing and I love inspiring people I love meeting people on the street and they're like they don't even want a photo they just want to tell me like hey thank you for making me feel something or making me feel alive or like that I can be weird or dress different or be a guy in makeup I think the guy in makeup trend is kind of dead don't you think during the pandemic or even before the YouTube era there were so many men in makeup every beauty brand was using guys now it's kind of fallen off but it's like if you're a little boy that's wanting to dabble with makeup for the first time, pick up the brush and don't be afraid because I wasn't. And look where you are now. Absolutely. Now you're on your yak farm. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I am though. On the yak farm, on the private jet. You're like, you're like all putting mascara on the yaks. Only hair dye. <laughs> Vegan hair dye. You actually dye the yaks? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's just vegetable. It's all, it's all safe. Yaks have really nice eyelashes, though, don't they? They do. You're going to have to come visit. You can pick one out and you can eat it. <laughs> oh, I don't, li I don't like that. I'm sorry. I do eat meat, but I don't think I could, like, meet the thing before I eat it. You couldn't dress it? You couldn't... You couldn't um, Kill it? You couldn't kill it and then skin the fur and then eat? No. I mean, I'm... Sh yeah, n no. Well, when you do... When, no. when, you're, when the podcast is traveling, come on by. We'll give you a revolver and we'll feed y'all. <laughs> okay. I mean, I would love to come see them and I would Have be you shot a gun before? No. What? Mm -mm, never been to a gun range. Really? Yeah. Oh, you got to come down. Shoot some... I would, be, I would go to a gun range. I would be fine shooting At our gun. ranch, you can just open the back door and just shoot at the mountain because there's no no humans there. Is it doesn't freak you out at all? No. But you I'm didn't grow up around guns, did I kind of did. Okay. Yeah. My dad was a marksman. He was really good at long distance shooting. Um, I think I just didn't grow up around them. Yeah. So it's just like... And then New York and California, gun culture is so different. People aren't like hunting for food in New York City. <laughs> I just could never live in a house with a gun though. Just what? mental health. Oh, stuff. okay. Yeah. I just wouldn't trust myself. Well, that's great. Yeah, yeah self aware. <laughs> so, so that's why I'm not a gun well, girl. Well, we'll give you an AK uh, 47 when you come over, and they're really fun. An AK? You have an AK 47? Yeah, from Israel. <laughs> no. We have AR 15s Okay, now you're just trolling. Now you're no, I swear to God, you, you could look at my collection. You, why do you have an AK 47? Because they're fun, and I like collecting. But you wouldn't ever use that, would you? On target practice, yeah. Okay, okay. But if someone's it's gonna, just for fun. Yeah, it's all for fun. It's really a sport. But if someone ever breaks into my house, I you have. Wouldn't a, use an AK forty seven on them. That's a little much. <laughs> Probably just a handgun would put them down, or a or a, yeah, or an AR. So wait, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was gonna be my last question, but now I'm like, blah, 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 blah. yeah. So in Wyoming, if someone breaks into your house, you can legally shoot them dead and go about your day the next day. But you told me like 30 minutes ago that mm -hmm. you believe in stricter gun laws. So oh where, so, yeah. So where are you drawing the line here? The line is um, mental health and actual real gun laws. So they're about to pass in Florida or Texas. Sorry, this is ignorant because I don't remember which state. I just read it yesterday. Concealed carry or open with no training. So in Wyoming, I have a concealed carry because I took a safety course, because I've been a resident, because I went to the police station and got fingerprinted and, and I was interviewed. Some of these laws, it's you move there, 
anyone can have a gun hidden in their jacket, no training. It's the no training and all this lax, weird shit. It's just not it. It's, okay, it's so wrong. you, so you, people should have, in your opinion, people should have guns. It should just be difficult and just like getting a driver's license. Absolutely. Like you have to go through a rigorous process. It's just too easy for a lot of these states and I think it's wrong. So yeah, I'm all for the Second Amendment. I think guns are, it depends, there's all, there's millions of people that have guns and they're responsible. I think obviously the news, you're, you see all the turmoil and the pain, but then that also translates to shitty laws. Why aren't, this, the political things just I know, fucked. I just, I can't do the automatic, or the semi-automatic ones. To oh, me, I'm like, yeah. why does anyone need that? For fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't seem To fun. blow shit up on the ranch, yeah. And target practice is fun. But yeah, when you're hunting an animal, you're not going to use a semi-auto. That's Is that not, illegal? Um, I don't know that answer, but it's not respected. Do you kill your own yaks? Like I have. You personally? When, when you sell food in restaurants, it has to be USDA inspected. It has mm -hmm. to go through a, a butchering plant. The animals are at peace with no stress. Um, but have I ever processed and learned from a hunter? Yes. And okay, and but that's not a daily occurrence. Yeah, yeah, you know, so yeah. People are gonna take this clip and be like, he killed all the yaks. <laughs> like, no, they're all raised on my land. They eat my grass, and then they go to a facility, and they are all processed. And then you see that um, USDA inspected meat. Okay, in excuse the my ignorance. How, <laughs> how do they process a yak? Um, you just knock it, meaning you just kill it. I know, but how do they kill it? Shoot it in the head. Okay. It just sounds harsh. Okay. Every piece of meat out there that's, that's been killed. In the head. Yes, and then it depends on the animal. Sometimes but it's like a special thing, right? That like goes in the head yeah, and then it's, comes it's, out. It's, it's not like a quick. bullet. You don't want, it can be, but it's also like a, a like a, a tool that just like, mm -mm, and it's literally lights out. Okay, okay. People think it's like this gory, and there are, I'm sure, but I'm just saying at these facilities where it's all very humane. And do and you use all of the yak? Yes. Okay. Yeah, which is cool. We've, we've donated parts of the animal for research, for science, we save the hides, which you could sell, and we save all the skulls because people like um, buying them and decorating them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what did I read the other day? It was like someone just being uh, angry at like the fur industry or something, but it's like if you look at a lot of the stuff from the meat industry, it's like then it just gets thrown away. So all like, wasted. Should, yeah, should you like reuse the parts? Absolutely, you should use every part of the animal. Use Absolutely. every part of the yeah. animal if you're gonna kill the animal. Yes, it's disrespectful if not. It's like you're just wasting an animal. Have you ever had someone break into your house? No, we have security guards, uh, barbed wire, a huge gate. Uh, it'd be pretty ballsy to try. So if someone even gets near my house before they are even buzzing the gate, I know they're there. I have sensors. Also for animals, we do have elk and antelope and a few mountain lions. So if there's animals near my home that are not the yaks, I get alerts. Or if anyone walks by, if it's a yak or anything or a human. So no, I'm not afraid of it. I'm not afraid of anyone. I've never pulled my gun on someone before. But you would, in the certain situation, oh, yeah. you would feel comfortable doing so? Absolutely. Okay. Cause that's... If you're going to break in or try to harm me and my family, mm -mm. see ya. Yeah, again, why I feel like I could never have a gun. Because I, I feel like if you have a gun, you, you need to be willing to use it. Yes, and you should be trained on using it. So I know how to take apart and clean and do everything with a gun. Yeah. No. It's like a sport. It's really fun. But they're all locked away, like in, in... No. What do you mean you don't lock them away? That's not a law. In California, it is. I know it's not a law, but you don't feel like just for safety that so people can't access them? Who? I don't know. Are there's not people living in your house? No. I mean, <laughs> I have employees and my ranch hand and my people that come over, they're all well-versed in guns. So yeah, when you do come over, there's about six loaded guns in the kitchen. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Ready to roll. What if a dog trips over one and it goes off? They're Everything's too high up. They will never get it. <laughs> Okay. I always, thought, I always thought they have to be like in a lockbox. Uh, in California and maybe New York. What if you have a suicidal friend? Well, then I guess you won't have one any longer soon. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes, dark humor. We're coming back. 2023 and suicide's not funny because my dad killed himself, but my joke's funny. <laughs> Your dad killed himself? Yeah. You don't have to be quiet about it. It was so long ago. I know, but you that's, have <laughs> that's hard though. That's like um It's not hard. Really? Mm -mm. Not a It's been so long. I that know. was 30 plus years ago. Like, no. But that's why I make humor out of everything because I've had a really crazy life. Mhm. Mm but no, 
I don't have any friends that want to kill themselves and they're not going to come over and grab a gun off my counter. That scenario is very rare and wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they're not locked away. And that's not changing. <laughs> and that's not, over cha- it. that's not changing anytime soon. Absolutely. And like not. I gift you like a lockbox. No. <laughs> like a little pink. I have over 120 firearms. A little paint. Oh my gosh, you need like a shed for them to be locked I away. I do have in. a gun room. Oh, you have a gun room? Yeah. Where the other hundred are and then Did you have guns in LA? Uh one. Oh, so this is a new thing. To be able to have that many. In California you can only buy one gun a, m- a month. In Wyoming, you could just slide your card and buy 20 on the spot. So it's but just different like laws. three years ago, though, you only had one gun, and now you have like 100? Because I didn't have the option to buy yeah. that many. Yeah. Oh, very fascinating. And then the, the the process to do it once a month in California is strenuous and weird, and it's just great, though. Keeps things more under- Do people get mad at you for owning guns? No. No? Okay. Mm-mm. I post them all the time. I posted makeup reviews where I tested a Gucci foundation, then I went to the gun range with my pink glittery AR. In in your makeup? Yep. To try out the foundation for long wearing. Um, no, I post guns a lot. I posted my journey going to Italy, getting a gun custom made with my... They engraved my face on the gun. It was like the coolest thing. Yeah, I, I have no... It's a no piece pro- of art, honestly. I have no problem with guns. I just personally don't think I could ever live with one. And that we would, love that knowledge. Yeah, that would be a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> we love that knowledge, Jay. But like even my friends that Jay may have never really shot a gun before, but now he's been in Wyoming, he shot 50 guns. It's fun. It's a sport. And it's like, and a lot of people that come over have never shot one and they think it's like scary. And then once you give them basic training and you go to the the target practice and they hit their first bullseye, it changes their view of like it being evil or like weird or scary. It's like, are they up on the wall? I'm I'm like imagining them like just on your kitchen counter, like like right by the oven. Like an 80 acre pasture and there's targets laid out and you're like farther away, like trying to get the target. Sorry, I keep hitting this. Like a big (laughs) dildo in my mouth. Um... Yeah. No, but I mean the ones in the house. I'm like imagining them like out on the kitchen counter. Oh, they like, are. Like big guns. Yeah, I can FaceTime my assistant right now and there's an AR on the counter loaded and he can open the door and just pop off around. When you guys first saw this, was that not a little freaky? Jay? Huh? Was it freaky to see guns at my house for the first time? Well, I just asked one question then I kept the question. And what was your question? I was like, uh, if it was allowed to, like if a cop came in, remember what, what they took and you said... Oh yeah, because because he you know he lives in California, where if he, if a cop went to his current home and he had and there five was, guns and there was around. five loaded guns on the counter, that is deemed illegal. The ammo has to be in a box. But here's the thing: so someone breaks into his house, he has thirty seconds to react. You could think you're going to be able to run to your closet, unlock your box, load the bullets. You're already dead. What? The killer's already in your house finding you. You're stabbed. Like it's just no. What about a taser? Go by. <laughs> <laughs> uh-uh. And then you miss because a taser is close contact. The ones that shoot out are for police only. I don't know. So we're going to do close contact with a killer? Uh-uh. Once the glass breaks, I'm shooting through the door, baby. Didn't you used to have like um one of those safety rooms that no one could a get into? In a panic mansion. room? Yes. You could jump in your panic room. I don't have one in Wyoming. Okay. But I've, well, that's not true. I wouldn't. It's not a panic room like my old house, but... Let's say someone was breaking in. You're you're not you're not getting through the door. Okay. And my but I, with eight dogs and so many. Yeah, you're gonna hear them. I will never. Even, you'll never make it to my door. Okay. So for everyone listening, you, you will with, never make it to my door. Yeah, for everyone who's do getting any idea. A, do to, I sleep with a gun by my bed? bedside? Yeah, of course. Okay, in the bedside table or under the pillow? It's hard to explain my bed because okay. I only fuck guys that are over six foot. So I my bed is six is is nine feet by ten feet. So I like to accommodate all the basketball players and NFL. So my bed is designed way different than a normal folk. And there's like a panel that's hidden and I can click that my dogs can't do and the gun will pop out ready to go. And it's loaded, ready to go. Yeah, same. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Yes. Now, I prefer hot loads, but if I have to defend my life. And you've never had an accident happen where you've like stepped on one or anything. You can't step on a trigger. And the guns have safeties. I feel like I read, I read, I read scary <laughs> She just wants to hear a horror story. No, nope. no, I'm just, the dogs it's and I my are, own nervousness. We're, we're purely safe. I also have a flamethrower that Elon Musk made me from the Boring Company. There's only a thousand made and Miss Lynn has one. So when the snow hits, we flamethrow the front yard. Elon Musk gave you a flamethrower? I bought it to fund something, some of his bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> He'll, like before it, 
Tesla was so big, he would do these things where he would launch like random things. He did to a flame. He did a flamethrower one. one year. Woo Best thing I ever purchased. Okay, so you like toys. Besides these teeth, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you like toys. Mm. You like you like toys that feel very I awful. I don't own sex toys, and I I'm not into that. I like live right, action. Really? Yeah, I know that's I'm a little shocking. I'm gonna, shocking ha I'm gonna for have people. to send you something. Don't have though. a dildo. Don't have anything like that. I'm making a yeah. toy and company. Oh, okay. I'll sit on it. Let's go. <laughs> okay, I'll send you some when <laughs> I'll it comes review it, out. Girl. Okay. I'll review anything. Okay. Mm. Okay, I'll send you. Well, thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much for having me. Thank you so I really much. It was it. lovely to meet you. If I'm ever in Wyoming. Absolutely. Come on down.